Hi guys, it's Yaya Diamond. I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio. We have our author's edition coming up right now. Don't you go anywhere. Welcome back to the show. So today we have a gentleman that works on Aristotle. And I mean, he's a classic. I mean, I, I, he can he can probably be better than I can. And I want to welcome, you know what? I'm probably going to torture his last name. So I'm just going to say, William, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So tell us about yourself because you started earlier telling me about yourself, but now I need to know. All right. But first, should I press got it or... Should you what? Uh, the, I, I have a big white box in front of your face. Yeah, go ahead and press yes. G get it? Got it? Oh, yeah, there we funny. are. There you go. Now, you have, now you're a real person. I am. <laughs> well, I didn't know that until now. <laughs> so tell no, us about no. yourself. Yeah, tell me about myself. Yes. Well, I'm, a, I, I, I'm an old man, uh, but I've had a lot of, done a lot of things along the way. Most importantly, I guess, I, I got a PhD in classics, Greek and Latin, and I've been a professor of Greek and Latin, and I've written books about Aristotle and his pupil, Theophrastus. That's my publishing career. Now, what you're interested in today is a sidelight in my life. Okay. It's called cartooning. Oh, and perhaps should I go on now? I mean, yes, keep going. I, 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 I was very lucky, and I grew up in the country. Mm -hmm. And when I got mm -hmm. home from school, there was nobody to play with, so I had to do something. I was a nervous kid, so I had to do something. So I got a crayon and I started drawing cartoons, and I would get the last week's newspaper and look up the comic section and trace or, or drunk to do these things. So very long, early in life, I enjoyed making cartoons. And that's how this book got started. Not uh -huh. this book, but how, what, what, how cartooning got started. Just mm -hmm. playing by being left alone. It's wonderful when you're left alone. Think what you can oh, do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Wow. So, so I did, I used to make cartoons of Dick Tracy, Flat Top, Bugs Bunny, all this stuff. But I had a transformative experience when I finally got out of school uh, in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I went on to Princeton University, where the mascot is a tiger. Oh. And so I started drawing tigers but why not there was no dick tracy at princeton but there were tigers all over the place so i developed a tiger and not not thinking that i'd someday write a book or publish a book full of tigers but just because it was fun mm -hmm. and it, it became such fun that i started cartooning things around me at princeton and i'll just mention one obvious thing um, I used to go, I used to wrestle. I learned to do that in school. Mm -hmm. And at Princeton, I went out for the wrestling team. And we happened to have had a pretty good wrestling team freshman year and right through senior year. And lo and behold, we won the Ivy League. And the Ivy League is Princeton, Harvard, Yale, all these. Yeah, that's stuff. a big deal. You know, that, well, in those days, it was a bunch of old men and old boys. Women were not included. But, but I, that's what I did. I started drawing pictures. And in this, and I started collecting, just not really know. This is, of course, we're back at 19, oh, I don't know, 1950 something, 1958, 59, that sort of thing. And I started collecting the things I drew, not realizing there was a future for them. But at some point I said to myself, hey, wait a minute, we should collect or I should collect this stuff. And that I did. And it makes up the contents of Tiger cartoons. And the very first cartoon, if I can hold it up and show it, 
Definitely. Very, very first cartoon. Now you'll have to tell me if you can. Can you see it? I can go back some. Go back. Go back. Yeah. Now go up. Aha. Got it. The very first cartoon shows me, at least a fantasy of me, freshman year. No, this would be then the junior senior year at Princeton. Uh, holding beer, class of 58, and oh, the Eke Puer Tigris, I wrote in, in the 50s because I was studying Latin. Mm. And PU Gym means Princeton University Gym, where I went and wrestled. Now, if we just go a little further, hang on. There we go. Princeton didn't have girls in those days, but we imported them. And I met a young girl down in New Jersey in the summer, and I decided I should invite her, invite her up to Princeton because there were no girls there in those days. And we started dating, if you will, that's what you said in those days. Mm -hmm. And I drew a picture of her. In those days, you won the heart of a girl not by holding her hand, but by doing things like cartooning. And here she is. If it's coming through on your end, you can see yes. the picture. of her. She's being really naughty. She's uh, pouring oh. beer on her head. I see that. And and, and she's holding a, a, what do you say, a cup or a, a beer mug. She's holding a beer mug that says beat Yale. And uh. of course, Yale was our big rival. And... Yeah, stop there. And she says, well, as you can see, she's got her hand, her legs have turned into an eight and her hand. She's Go up a little on. bit. Go up. Her legs have tur turned ah, into 58. A and 58. So that, that's the start of this book. It's where it all started. And the first chapter of the book is, that's its title, Where It All Started. Wow. And here we go. It says, notice in cauda, that means a knot in the tail. So I'm claiming her as my own, I suppose. Goodness knows what I was thinking way back then. <laughs> but I, I put a knot in her tail. And I don't suppose her mother liked that at all. No. But Probably we ended not. up, I'm trying to, hang on. So anyway, this, this developed from senior year. And we ended up getting married. You did? Go up a little bit. There we go. Oh there my go. gosh, look thing. at you guys. <laughs> and this is from a this is a chapter called Growing a Growing Family. And this is a family at five years. And you'll see the I can see the top. I can't see the bottom. You know, you said a girl and there's a go boy. Back. Go back huh? more. Go back. Back it up so that we can see the whole picture. There you go. Uh -huh. Like hey. that, yeah. Good. Well, the boy, the boy is here, mm -hmm. and that's that's one of our children, of course. Lots have happened in the meantime from the first picture you saw to this event. Right. But why not right. jump through a few years, and then the daughter's over here. <laughs> and look at his smile. If you can see the boy's smile, oh, it's smirking. He, he's up. He's up to no good. Oh yeah. He, he's obviously thinking ahead and ignoring his parents, who are only scantily dressed. I'm wearing a necktie, and <laughs> Connie's, Connie's got a skirt on. Yeah. But that, that's, that's, that's sort of an artist's license, so that we didn't go yeah. around looking at that all the time. So, so we had a lot of fun. And then 10 years go by, and we have an additional child. Oh my goodness, he, go up a little bit. He's sitting oh. there with a helicopter propellers on his head. He's got- I see that. Yeah, nifty kid. He was really good. He still is a nifty kid. So that, that's, the, that's how it all got started. And that's the wow. first chapter of the book, how it all got started. It had to go, we went to Princeton, whose mascot is a tiger. Yeah. And a tiger is a very ferocious animal whom we must respect. Nothing like the Yale Bulldog, who sits <laughs> fat, fought, but sits on the ground. <laughs> and nothing like, nothing like Harvard. For the Harvard uh, are to the crimson, crimson rose true. 
Now, the crimson rose isn't the mascot or anything. You get, they just tear them apart. But a tiger, that's worth drawing. And I've spent many, many years drawing tigers just for the fun of it. I had no idea wow. I was going to pu publish a book. Christmas card from time to time. Yeah. So I'm going to jump ahead 40 years. Oh, my gosh. This is 40, well, 40 years, so it'd be 35 years. But at 30, 45 years, I record a blip in our happiness. I, we had gone off. I'd got, well, no, I wanted to stop over, start over again, Billy. I had gotten a fellowship to do uh, classics, Aristotelian studies in Europe. Mm. But I, that meant... I was going to be in Europe for a whole year, which I didn't want to be. And I would miss Princeton reunions, something that all Princetonians should attend. And may I just add that I am organizing the 65th reunion, which is only a week away, a few weeks away. Oh, wow. But in, but in any event, I say here, I feel like a fish out of water because I'm in Europe when I want to be in America. Yeah. And so I'm just going to stop after this. And I had a recovery. I didn't stay always miserable. Rather, my good wife, Connie, got out my reunion jacket, which is now on the tiger you can see here. That's a reunion yeah. jacket. And we planned to get home back to America in time for Princeton reunions. And it made me very, very, very happy. Foolishness, yes, of course. But some of us enjoy being just a little foolish. <sighs> OP. Anyway, we ended up with three children, and they had children. And here's a cartoon I did of my Kansas family, my daughter and her children. Yeah, there's my, that's, oh, that's my granddaughter. That's my granddaughter who <laughs> is an artist. That's my wife. And there's a grandson. And these just are all fun things. But I've put yeah, them all together. Um... And some of them, of course, are quite important. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of them are paid for. Now, I want to just say something about Princeton reunions. Princeton reunions are typically five-year events. Those of us who are crazy go every year. But on the whole, it's a five-year event. And at the 25th reunion... Each class chooses a jacket that it will wear. Mm -hmm. And classes, the classes fight furiously over jackets. And my class, I thought it would fall apart because there were some stuffy people, typically from, well, I, I would better not, but typically nose high. They wanted only a blue blazer that they could wear to the country club. But those of us who didn't have a country club wanted a red, a, sorry, orange and black jacket that we could wear to reunions. And that's what we fought over at the 25th. And it was finally decided that this will be our class jacket. Wonderful. Look at that. Can you see that on the screen? Yeah, back up, back up a little bit. Back up. There you go. I can see it now. That, 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 that is a man named Hugh Fairman, who's won the day. He, he was a class officer, and he went out and he had a, this jacket made, especially to have his photograph taken. And it was so popular that the class finally voted for this to be our reunion jacket. And uh. I, I've done this cartoon in, within the last year to honor Hugh in the book that is being published tiger cartoons wow <laughs> oh there one has to laugh there's just a lot of crazy people in this world like me but we, have, 
We have fun. Come on now. All right. Now I. Time moves on, and here's a picture of us at our 60th reunion, sitting there in the class jacket, and yeah, and having a big banner behind us. 60th reunion. Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. And I want to so, show you so what different. Was. I want to show you another thing. This is a, this is also from the 60th reunion. Um, but here we are, the tiger riding again. Rock on 58. That was the theme that year. So I did a cartoon of a tiger sitting on a rocking horse, carrying the class banner 58. And you can imagine him rocking back and forth like this. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness you've done something so different so you've taken your whole life and you've drawn it out yeah now i want to take bring you right up to date because i told you that i'm organizing or have organized the 65th reunion mm -hmm. and here i am in the class cartoon that i did two guys in jacket the guy in the middle has lost his jacket and he's hoping somebody's going to find one <laughs> and return it so he can go to reunions properly dressed. And we have here a little cheer. We're feeling fine. We're doing great. We're the class of 58. Wow. Now, in case you missed that, let me do it once more for you. We're feeling fine. We're doing great. We're the class of 58. So that, <laughs> that's what's coming up in another month in my life. And wow. I'm really exciting for it. But don't think that Princeton is all about drinking beer and getting old. <laughs> the, uh, the book finally shifts to the recent, well, not so recent. Here's a picture of wrestling and the 19, some 1956 team that won the Ivy League championship. And so I did this cartoon of it way, way back soon when I was still in college in 1956. And I've been doing wrestling cartoons um, ever since. And I just enjoy doing it. <laughs> wow. Oh, dear, wow. dear God. Now, and, and, and here we go. This is, this is one of my favorite cartoons. Now, uh, surely nobody could guess this without a background. But you can see that there's a, on the, this side of the picture, the guy's taking a shower. Okay. And the other guy there is a man named Art Tebbett. He's unfortunately deceased, as most of my classmates are. He's unfortunately deceased, but he was a very, very good wrestler, and he couldn't hang on to this guy that's in the shower because he had oiled himself. Yeah. He was on the Cornell wrestling team, which was favored to win the Ivy League. And we beat him, but we beat him because Art walked off the mat, got to the referee and said, I can't hold on to this person, but I'm very good on top. He must be oiled. And the referee went to him, went to the boy from Cornell, stroked him up and down, smelled his fingers. And he said, you're right. He's been oiled. Mm. And so he sent the Cornell team down to the showers to clean themselves off. You can see this guy's in a shower now. That's water coming down. And there he is. There's his butt. He's in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the shower. There he is. But the, the Cornell, the, the referee, had to send them back for a second shower. They oh were so determined to be slippery. So this, this act, outrageous act by the Cornell wrestling team is now going to be published and hopefully immortalized forever. <laughs> wow, oh my gosh, that is absolutely crazy. All right, now there are other things in this book that are worth paying attention to. One is sailing. This is how we got various women from my family in. Here mm -hmm. we've got a picture of my wife steering and a slightly younger man sailing 
off Barnegat Bay, and they won the Bay Championship that awesome. year. Go up a little bit so we can see. Uh, little little see. Okay, there we go. Yes, okay. And, they won right. the Bay Championship that year. Yeah. Very, very, very good. We said, I didn't want people to think this was only a book about men wrestling and things like that. No, no, women can get in it too if they do something important. <laughs> and here, here we have my daughter on a boat. She's this one, I guess. They, she was 10 years, a decade behind Connie in a Bay Championship, but she won a Bay Championship. So now it really gets to be difficult to picture a tiger under a spinnaker going downwind. Go up. That, uh, <laughs> go up. There, there we are. Uh -huh. There we go. So we have uh, you know, any number of things you can do with cartoons. Mm -hmm. And this, this book is meant to exhibit that. And I'll just give you one or two more fun things. This is, this is a Christmas card. Oh. <laughs> That's a Christmas card. And yeah, Christmas is coming. The goose is getting fat. Please put a penny in the old man's hat. And if you go over to the inside of the card, if I can accomplish that. Yep, here we are. Here is the old man sitting in front of a hat collecting money. Please put a penny in the old man's hat. Go down so we can see the hat. Yeah. Okay, good. Up, go up. Yeah. Go up more. Up more. Oh, there yeah, we are. up more. Keep going up. Keep going. I don't see the old man's hat. His cane. Keep going. Oh, I see the hat now. There's the hat. Well, yeah. it's an old hat. He's an old man. He's, He's just an old man. The old hat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so back up a little bit so that it's not so close because it's too close. Like near your face is good. All right. There we go. Yeah. Please oh put gosh, a penny the in the hat. old man's hat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. And I got just one more, I guess, here I'll put to you. Oh, well, when COVID came just a couple of years ago now. Right. I decided to express the mood of the country <laughs> in this cartoon. <laughs> and here, this guy over here is saying it's the Grinch at Christmas. But this I say, no, it's COVID. And that's a pretty good assessment. You can have a Grinch that turns you off or you can have a COVID epidemic. And that's where we were three years ago. Christmas. Yeah. All right. Well, I won't tease you any longer, but I will. That's I great. I like that. I like the idea that you took your entire story and drew it out as tigers. That yeah. is wonderful. And you said you have other books as well. Oh, well, I, I, I mean, my... This is a, a sidelight in my existence or life or whatever you say, because, well, I'm most famous for, uh, most famous, if anybody <laughs> has ever heard of me, if anybody has ever heard of me, it's for working on Aristotelian philosophy and especially his first pupil, a man named Theophrastus. Theophrastus, he was a Greek who succeeded Aristotle as head of the peripatetic school and made in quite considerable contributions way back in the BCs, 400 BC. Wow. And that's what I did. I've written something like six books on, on Greek philosophy. Wow. And that, that's, that's been my career. Mm -hmm. And the wonderful part about it is, of course, we, were, we, we did well enough, so we were invited to Europe frequently. And we, were, we lived in Holland and, oh goodness knows, England. And Germany. Germany was where we did most of our work. And I even write in German, but I don't recommend that for people who had like to have fun with cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's me. There's nothing oh. more to tell. <laughs> William, thank you so much for sharing your book with us. Well, you're very nice to let me. <laughs> so it's coming out soon. When is it coming out? The book should be out within a month. Mm -hmm because I want to take it to Princeton reunions, the 65th reunion, which I'm running. And I want to take it and give copies to some of my close friends and tease others by sort of saying, don't you want to order a copy? <laughs> and that that's, it will be out, uh, I say, with, within a month. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to yeah. have yeah. the link in the description box so, so people can actually go ahead and grab it when it's ready. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, I can't see my my box at this moment, but <laughs> it's it's going to be easy enough to get. You can always go to Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. Uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and put that link in the description box. So it'll be easy for you guys to go ahead and grab that when, when it comes available right now, yeah. it's just unavailable out of stock. It's because it's not on the shelves yet. So just keep your eye out because it should be out within the month. I want to thank you so much, William, for being on the show. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. It's very rare anybody invites me at this age. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? You have a lot to give and we want to learn. Uh, I am having fun. I'm having fun. I've never stopped giggling. Oh, that is wonderful. That is a great advice right there. Never stop giggling. <laughs> but thank you so much. Okay. And thank you guys thank you. so much for tuning in. Don't forget to dare to be different. And until next time, guys, bye. Thank you so much for stopping by. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell so you'll be notified the next time that I upload. And don't forget to dare to be different. Until next time, guys. I do to be different. I do to be different. I do to be different.